Hello, this is Bruno Luce with GLB Productions and welcome to the first episode of The Sounding Board. This is a new series in which I choose four or five viewer questions that I received recently and I share the answers with all of you, my dear subscribers. The questions I've chosen are either ones that I've gotten several times in the past or they're ones that I feel are very good questions and worth sharing with a wider audience than just the original questioner. So without any further ado, let's get going. Uh, the first question is, can you run a powered speaker off of a power amplifier? Now the answer to this question is, it depends. You must never run the speaker outputs, the speaker level outputs of a power amplifier into the line level or mic level inputs of a powered loudspeaker. You'll damage something pretty quickly. However, it is possible to use the daisy chain out or the link out from the input of the power amplifier and connect that to the input of a powered loudspeaker. In other words, if you look on the back of a power amplifier where you plug the signal in, there may be a male XLR output or sometimes a TRS jack that can be used to take the signal out, sometimes to another power amplifier and sometimes to uh, the input of a recording device or a powered loudspeaker. To get more information on this, uh, please check out my video how to connect a power amplifier to passive loudspeakers. There's a full discussion there on daisy chaining and how to use unused inputs as outputs. The second question is when connecting a laptop or smartphone to a mixer, what should the volume on the device be set at? Uh, in most cases, I find it's best to set the volume of the device at maximum. Now, there's a couple of reasons for this. First of all, it means that nobody can turn the volume up in the middle of the presentation and give you a hard time, but it also generally will give you the best signal to noise ratio. Um, on these devices, very often, if you run them, say, at half or quarter volume, you can get quite a bit of noise. So I find start with the volume at maximum and then set gain on your mixing console in the normal way. If that causes distortion in the output of the device, obviously you'd want to back the volume down, but otherwise keep it at maximum and that should give you the best results. Third question is where should the channel and master faders be when setting gain on the mixing console. Now, this is a question that I've gotten at least 10 times since I published that video, how to set gain on the mixing console. Um, the answer is that the master fader should be set at unity. Now, when we say unity gain, we mean the zero dB mark, which is typically about three quarters of the way up the fader. So master fader should be set at unity gain. The channel fader, I recommend keeping the channel fader all the way down when you do the initial setting of gain. Now the reason for this is that sometimes in live sound, you get very, very hot input signals. For example, from a kick drum, a snare drum, or certain keyboard patches. And you don't want this signal exploding through your PA system when you bring the gain up. So I would say start with the fader all the way down, press PFL, set gain, and then once the gain is correct, you can bring the fader up to your operating level. This is the safest way that I found to do it over the years. The next question and the last one for this episode is, can I connect the output of a DI box to a line level input on the mixer? Now, this is a very interesting question because as you recall, DI boxes such as this uh, IMP2 here, typically 
the output is microphone level. Now this particular subscriber, he had an issue where he'd run out of mic channels on his mixer and he was wondering, can I bring the output of a DI into a line uh, level only channel, right? The answer, again, is it depends. Now before I shot this video, I went and I did some testing uh, using my Mackie 802 VLZ4 and two DI boxes. I used the IMP2 and I used the BSS AR133, both of which have been featured in my videos before. So if you have a look at this picture, you can see that the Swiss Army tester is set to plus 4 dB, meaning line level. With a line level signal, if you run that through the IMP2, it produces an output signal that can be run into a line level, as you can see on this picture. The gain has to be set at about 2 or 3 o'clock, meaning you need quite a bit of gain to bring that signal up to a usable level, but it can be done. Now in this picture, what I have done is the cable tester is still outputting a plus 4 dBU signal, but I've now plugged the output of the IMP2 into one of the stereo channels on the Mackie. Now this channel does not have any adjustable gain, and as you can see, there's not enough level to reach unity gain, as you can see on the meters. So the first part of the answer is, with passive DI boxes, this is normally not possible unless A, you have a line level signal to begin with, for example, from a keyboard or certain effects pedals, and you have adjustable gain on the line level input of your mixer. Now what about with active DI boxes? In this picture, you can see I'm running through the BSS audio and with the uh, cable tester outputting the plus 4 dBU signal, there's plenty of signal available at the mixer. So plugged into a line level input on the Mackie, you can still get a good signal there. However, when I moved the output switch on the uh, cable tester to the minus 10 position, you can see from this picture that the signal drops below unity. What that means is, with an active DI box, a line level signal going in will generally produce a line level signal coming out. Now, it depends on your DI box, but active DI boxes are generally unity gain devices, right? Level in equals level out. So, it may work. The problem was, as you can see from this picture, there's a 9 volt battery hanging out of the DI box. And the reason is that I usually power my active DI boxes off phantom power, which is only available at the microphone inputs. So solve one problem, create another. So if you use an active DI box, you'll need to power it off battery power because the line level inputs on a mixer do not provide phantom power. So take that and see what you can do with it. So that's all for this episode of The Sounding Board. Um, please let me know in the comment section below if you like this concept. The good thing about these videos is that they're fairly easy to produce and they don't require a lot of post-production, which is what really slows things down. Um, I'm hoping to do one of these every week or maybe every couple of weeks, depending on my schedule. Um, if you like my videos, please subscribe to GLB Productions and also please consider supporting the channel uh, via my Patreon page. Link in the description below and also in the video cards which can be accessed by clicking in the top right corner of your screen. Until next time, this is Bruno Luce for GLB Productions. Take care and God bless you. Bye-bye.